Welcome back, TCS TV viewers. Chris Nichols here from the Camera Store. And uh, as you know, we're on our adventure here in Japan, and I've decided to also bring the Fuji GFX. You know, I'm really excited to play with this camera because, you know, there's two medium format cameras that are really making a big buzz on the market right now, and that's the Hasselblad X1D and then the Fuji GFX. And the appeal of these cameras is medium format image quality in a smaller size. So I figured while we're traveling in Japan, you know, we don't want to carry too much stuff. I'm going to give this camera a try and see what I think about it. Now, right now we're coming to you from the beautiful Hakone area. We're going to do some interesting stuff here, but I am also going to do not only classic landscapes in this area, but also uh, get this into the streets of Tokyo, do some street shooting. Everybody seems super excited on the Fuji GFX as a street camera. And I actually found that quite interesting myself. And of course, I love street photography, so I can give it a try and see what I think on it. Now, when it comes to the Fuji GFX body, I mean, the first thing that really strikes me, and it's a stark contrast against the Hasselblad X1D, is the more practical, commercial, SLR kind of looking body that we get here. And frankly, it's not very pretty. It certainly is functional. Uh, we played with this camera at Photokina, and we had the same impression. They haven't changed it much. It's got a beautiful grip, very comfortable, puts your hands in a really nice location to touch the autofocus selector switch, the control pad, and your dials. They've also got this screen on the top, and that's always on so you'll always have a good idea of what your battery life is how many shots you have remaining and so on and so forth now Fuji have also decided to keep the same control structure that they have on a lot of their X series cameras and by that I mean we've got an ISO dial here on the left and you can lock it of course we got shutter speed on the right which is also lockable and then aperture on the lenses so you have that same kind of tactile control that you'll find on something like an X-T2 or X-T20 and Fuji users really appreciate that on the back here you'll notice you've got a rotating screen uh, and that is handy to have. You can go both directions, although it does extend the body here quite a bit. That makes the grip nice and svelte, but it also makes the camera quite thick here. And I think from a visual perspective, maybe it makes the camera look a little awkward, and a little chunky. And then on the viewfinder here, you've got removable prism. Look how easy that is to take off. There we go. But this does have an EVF system, and this opens up a lot of other options. Probably chimney finders, waist level finders, all sorts of stuff are gonna be coming out for this camera, and it gives it some expandability. There we go, it goes back on again, nice and easy. I do also wanna say this, very important right off the bat, this EVF is stunningly good easily one of the nicest I've used. You can manual focus with it, it's beautiful, it's bright and it's magnified. So that's a big bonus to have on a camera like this. Now, I'm using the Zone AF here on the GFX, but again, I have to say that I definitely love having this control joystick here. It makes it so easy when the, the viewfinder's up to your eye to just move the focusing point where you want, press it in, I can rotate the tile if I want to change the size of the zone. All of this makes the camera very, very intuitive to focus with. So out here on beautiful Lake Ashi, we're on this uh, ferry and just kind of enjoying the countryside in this place. And you know, what's amazing about having a medium format but mirrorless camera is just to, to appreciate how small it can actually be. So, you know, I've got one lens on here right now, but it all fits into a compact camera bag like this. It also means that the tripod that I can carry with me can also be quite a bit lighter. So again, if you're gonna do any traveling, I mean, the Hasselblad X1D is certainly more compact than this, but this isn't as bad as you might think. And again, remember, I am packing a medium format 50 megapixel sensor in there. So viewers, make, make note of a few things here. First off, using a wooden post, even though I have a perfectly good photo clam tripod on the ground. And uh, second, I'm using a polarizer, but I do wish that these hoods had the cutout. You know, that's one of the nicest things with, with Pentax. It'd be nice to be able to adjust that here quickly, but oh well. I have to admit, I am a little jealous. I've got everybody else out here doing selfies. They look like they're having a great time. Everybody knows that they've actually been here. I don't know how we're gonna have any proof that I've been here, except I guess Jordan recording the show. Uh, the GFX, a selfie camera, it is not. I mean, the screen is nice in that it articulates. It even does go vertically. Again, I'm not a big fan of this. This is on the X-T2, and I don't really like it very much, but I can't do a full selfie, and you know, couple that with the poor sort of minimum focusing distance of most of these medium format lenses. Yeah, it's not gonna do it. So, no selfie camera is a travel camera. That is one knock against our travels here. 
As we consider the Fuji GFX as a travel camera, actually as a body, it's very lightweight, and I do like that. You save a lot of weight compared to something like a Pentax 6 or 5Z, for example. However, even though the bodies are light because of the mirrorless system, you still can't get away from the larger glass. And this 3264, which is a really convenient zoom for travel, it's still pretty big and heavy. And with this on here, I'm not finding I'm saving that much weight compared to a you know Pentax 6 or 5Z with its zoom lenses. That being said though, you do have some nice compact prime lenses. The 45 is quite light, the 63 is quite light, and so I think if you're okay with primes, you can get these down to a fairly travelable, small, lightweight package. All right, so we're just shooting here in the alleyways at night in Tokyo, and uh, the senior VP of Fuji Canada has uh, taken the camera, so while he's using that and playing with it, I'm just gonna take this opportunity to talk about, thank you, Greg, this camera's performance in uh, low light and, and day conditions when, when we're talking about autofocus. So first off, I'm gonna say this, the Fuji GFX in continuous autofocus, it's a little bit slow, the autofocus jitters quite a bit, it doesn't really lock on for a little while, and that seems to happen in any lighting. However, during the day, single focus is very, very quick and very accurate. I'm very impressed by that. You can see why a lot of people are enjoying this camera for street photography, as long as subjects aren't moving too quickly. Now when it does get a little bit darker though, things do change. Single point autofocus, single focusing, it is still very accurate and it is still fairly quick, but there's a noticeable slowdown where the camera needs more time to catch on to the subject. I mean, that makes sense, but I'm having a little bit of a hard time with the timing. The other thing that I also do notice in low light situations, uh, normally when you switch from the screen to the eyepiece, it's quite fast. But in low light situations, sometimes there's a little bit of slowdown for the screen to kind of pick up to its proper frame rate. And again, that does delay you a little bit. Overall, this camera's performing well. I could see in low light situations though, you have to feel uh, like you're shooting a little bit more of a ponderous camera. Now I do want to point out something very unique here. We actually are playing with the brand new 110 millimeter F2 for the Fuji GFX. So far delivering really nice results. A weatherproof portrait style lens. And it's working well for low light shooting out here. I also want to say that when we looked at the Hasselblad X1D, we found that the lenses, although sharp, had very strange bokeh. Lots of hexagonal shape. Not very pleasing in my opinion. The Fujinon glass, you get some corners, some cat's eyeing around the corners, but uh, otherwise beautiful bokeh, very soft, very pleasing autofocus element, so uh, I am liking the glass here very much in low light. The other thing I want to say about this camera while I'm shooting in here, yes again I've got a perfectly good tripod which is sitting down at my feet right now, um, this camera shoots incredibly stable photos. The shutter mechanism has almost no slap, it's actually very quiet, and just something about the weight of the body and the design means you can get very sharp shots handheld at slow shutter speeds. Now, of course, many of these lenses have image stabilization, but the body itself does not, and yet fifth of a second I can pull off, uh, eighth of a second, all these kind of shots, I can get fairly sharp pictures handheld. Uh, very, very impressed by that. You know, all in all, shooting in this kind of urban environment, I'm very impressed with the camera in low light. The autofocus is very hit or miss though. Sometimes it catches on, sometimes it has a really hard struggle. But again, I do like that I can move my focus point around very easily with my thumb. Otherwise though, I'm impressed with the low light performance and I'm impressed with the lens stability here. So great handheld camera for this kind of stuff. I probably should have left this back at the hotel room. Now I know with the GFX being a medium format digital camera, you might think that it's aimed at the professional photographer or the high-end enthusiast, but that's not necessarily true. It's a fairly affordable price tag as medium format digital goes, and Fuji have always been famous for their JPEG color and rendition. So, you know, if you're shooting RAW plus JPEG, you do still have the picture profiles here. Acros, Standard, Provia, Astia, you know, and more. All those profiles are in there, and that can really help you get beautiful JPEGs right out of the camera. Especially useful if you just want to shoot JPEGs nice and quick or maybe even send this off to an art director or tethering when you're working in the studio. Either way, it's a nice addition to have. So again, I just want to reiterate how important a tripod is as a photographic tool. I mean, it's incredibly useful anytime you're dealing with low light conditions and slow shutter speeds, which is uh, exactly why I'm not using it for some reason. I don't know what. But uh, propping it up here on the concrete seems to be working just great. 
And uh, it gives me an opportunity to use the touch screen here. And as I'm pressing on here, I'm going to say the GFX touch screen is very responsive. It works well, works basically like a lot of the other Fujis that implement the system. But there is a little bit of a delay from when you touch it to when it jumps over. So again, if I was in a street shooting situation, I was trying to get really fast action, capture those moments, I'm not going to rely on the touch screen autofocus position. But in this particular case, it works fantastic. So I think we're gonna call it a night. We're headed back to the hotel. We still have a lot more shooting to do with the GFX, but you've seen me hand holding the camera a lot on purpose, not using the tripod. And I'm gonna pretend that's to prove a point. When it comes to photography, especially on a camera like this, I'm shooting at 6,400 ISO or 12,800 ISO. I'm trying to keep my shutter speeds fairly fast, but I'm pushing things, you know, fairly slow shutter speeds and whatnot. And the thing I wanna say is, when you have a high resolution camera like this, even though I can shoot in these situations and even though I can push the sensor, these are not ideal conditions. I'm not gonna get the best capabilities of a camera like this handheld in the situation. And all that money that's being spent on a better sensor and better capabilities is lar largely gonna be thrown away uh, with the technique I'm using here. So tomorrow I'm gonna get out, we're gonna get faster shutter speeds. I might even use the tripod and I'm gonna keep the ISOs low and see if this camera can really shine in the situation that's kind of intended for. I think a lot of you at home know that Fuji's released H adapters to let you use the Hasselblad glass. I mean, this is a smart move, although so far it's going to be manual focus only, but it also has to be appreciated that one of the biggest benefits by far of the GFX platform is that you have a focal plane shutter. Now, this opens up a whole bunch of third-party adapters, and they're all coming out. Uh, you know, companies like Photodiax are making things that'll let you put on lots of 35 millimeter glass. It will cover in some cases, as well as let you adapt Pentax 645 glass, Mamiya, and probably probably so many others. So this is a really nice option to expand the lens lineup. So much like the Hasselblad and the Pentax 645Z, Fuji is designing the GFX to be a rugged outdoor kind of landscape camera. Very good in journalistic situations, as, as you can see, uh, very well weather sealed, as well as all the lenses on the roadmap so far also have the WR ceiling. So this is a good move. Now the Fuji GFX, it is a very interesting design choice, and this is where I'm a little bit at odds. You know, Fuji has done such a good job of taking that vintage look on their cameras and marketing that to their benefit. You look at the classic design of the Fujika ST801 and how that's influenced their XT series, their XT20s. Uh, you know, you look at the X100s, all being such beautiful cameras as well. With the GFX, they've gone to a very different kind of design aesthetic. And as we're surrounded by all this traditional Japanese design, we know that the country also has a lot of modern elements. This camera, it's not what I would describe as beautiful. It is certainly practical. It looks very technical. It looks very professional from a commercial standpoint. I do wonder if Fuji would do better to the mass market going with a very classic design, a more retro design. And uh, that's not to say that we won't perhaps see that in the future. I could see that being very appealing for street photography. Design always makes a difference, it's true. So we're here enjoying a beautiful day in the Meiji Jingu Gardens and uh, I took a few video clips on the GFX. I just want to talk about that next. You know, at first it looks like this camera's ready for high-end video because we've got mic jack, we've got headphone jack, uh, lots of 1080 modes and frame rates. However, uh, again, we got to remember that this is a medium format sensor and I think that's the big limitation here. Uh, the heat sinks, the processor power that'd be required to push this up to 4K, uh, you know, to make the video something that's going to really astound people would make the camera much larger and much more expensive so you know keep in mind it's 1080s your limitation it's a little bit soft and overall although you can get a beautiful aesthetic with the medium format chip I do feel the GFX is just not going to be a preeminent video cam and I'd say most of the market would agree with that it's here if you need it but it has not been fully implemented 
I have to say I am actually really impressed with the battery implementation on the Fuji GFX. I do like the side door and we get that large lithium battery in there. You're not going to have any interference from tripod work or anything like that when you need to change them out. And overall I expected this camera to be a real problem when it comes to battery life because it's so large, big sensor, big screen, beautiful viewfinder, but actually I'm quite impressed with the battery usage here. Again, you know, rough numbers don't really translate into the real world, but I've been shooting here now for a week on this camera and I would say I can get about 300 to 400 pictures through on a, on a good battery. So not bad, way more than expected on a camera like this. Right, TCS viewers, now obviously we're not in Japan anymore, we're back home, but we just wanted to throw this in on the GFX video, so, you know, forgive if it's a little bit jarring, but uh, we've got Brent Taylor, who's a photographer that actually used to work with us at the store. He's gone full pro, very talented commercial photographer, and he wants to really try out the Fuji GFX. Now, we're also talking about those sync speed issues, and he's going to be using it with lights today, so I'm going to pass it over to him. He's going to take some shots here of a very interesting gentleman doing a very interesting art form. We're going to meet him in just a little bit, um, but uh, just so you know, Brent is from South Africa, and most South Africans speak really, really good English, no problem at all, but I'm going to have to do some translating between you and Brent. So if you hear that, just, you know, don't worry about it too much. But anyways, Brent, man, thanks for coming. I appreciate uh, it. It's a pleasure. Uh, yeah. Well, it's good to see you again, man. So uh, if you could just tell the folks at home what your kind of problems you're going to be dealing with, what, uh, what issues you might be having with this camera. Yeah, I hear that the sync speed is around 125th of a second, so right, right. it might be a little bit of a problem, but we're going to use NDs and see how that, that's going to turn out today. All right, lekker, lekker. So, uh, folks at home, he's just saying that he's concerned about the 125th of a second sync speed. Uh, probably going to have to use some ND filters. Uh, he's got his lights today, but it should be a good experiment, and hopefully the GFX will uh, perform the way he wants it to. All right, so we're coming to you from this very interesting forge and shop. This whole place belongs to Dennis Paish. He's a local Alberta knife maker. And you know, Dennis is an artist. He does something very unique. He's not just making the blades. He's not just grinding them, forging them, and heat treating them, but he's also doing the handles, the hand guards, all the metal work, all the lathing. He does the leather work for his knife sheaves as well. It's really beautiful stuff. And so he's a good friend of Brent's. And we're in here doing environmental portraits with the GFX. Now, Brent is taking some shots here environmentally. He's using the Godox flashes. And in a situation indoors here, the 125th of a second sync speed is not going to be a problem, but we've got a really bright sunny day out today, so we're going to do some environmental portraits outside as well, and that's where we're going to see if this is going to be a problem or not. How's it going, Bits? Hey, it's going well, right, thank doing you. Okay. Yeah. Right, so let's talk about this first. So you had a chance to play with the camera, focusing. You were I saying did. something about how the Canon, you know, sometimes you've got front focusing, back focusing, this kind of thing. Eh? Yeah, I hit and miss with various lenses, the body, etc. And this seemed to focus bang on exactly where I wanted to every single time. The color was really, really good. In, in, when I worked with it in Lightroom, it was so easy to manipulate the uh, color and get the color balance just right between the ambience and the flash and the you know, halogen work lights and things like that. I mean, that, that makes so. a big difference, I suppose, right? If you're a busy guy, which you are, you're doing lots of yeah. shots, you don't want to spend too much time in post, right? No. And nice lots, mix lots, here. Yeah, lots of meat on the file. Like you could, you could like pull the highlights back, you know, lift the shadows, no problem. Right, lots of dynamic and, range. Uh, yeah, lots of dynamic range. So then from a standpoint of, uh, I know you did some portraits out here, so we're getting mm. into, into the bright light and you wanted to try the, the oh, yeah. syncing with flash, right? Yeah, neutral density. And of course, filters. one of the big complaints about this camera, for example, is 1 25th of a second. So did you find that that was a limitation for you? No, not really, because I mean, with the digital viewfinder, can, with the ability of the digital viewfinder being able to compensate for, right. you know, to punch right through the neutral density filters and show you a brighter view than normal of what you're looking at, you can actually um, have a very comfortable uh, view outside of what you're doing, even with a strong right. ND uh, filter. Very, very happy with the performance of this camera. Yeah. All right, okay. Very impressed. All right, well, thank you. Switching to Fuji. <laughs> 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 All right, so viewers at home, I know there was a long exchange. Uh, just roughly translated, Brent was basically saying how much he loves the YouTube show, how he's surprised we don't have a million subscribers yet, and how he just, you know, he thinks it's crazy. Uh, and that he enjoyed the camera, just like a Thanks small that, part Chris. of that was he enjoyed the camera. <laughs> Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, there you have it. 
All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that very detailed GFX review. And because of that, I'm gonna to try to keep things really quick here. I mean, first off, we are really excited to see the benefits of a mirrorless camera in medium format. The focus is accurate. The camera is smaller than, say, a full medium format SLR, but I mean, still bigger than most mirrorless cameras. But I love having things like the electric viewfinder, the exposure preview, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, testing this camera with Brent Taylor in a more commercial situation under studio lighting, you really get the benefits of that dynamic range that high resolution sensor, uh, the beautiful color, and you know, the focusing is very, very accurate. But I think that you know, you gotta still appreciate that a lot of people are excited for this camera as a street camera, as a, as a travel camera. On a tripod, this would be brilliant, but I still don't see about all the hype on street photography. This camera is still large as cameras go. It's a little intimidating. The focusing in single point was excellent, although in low light, we were somewhat disappointed. I will say that we just did update the firmware and the low light focusing for single point way better, but the continuous AF, still not gonna cut it. It's too slow, it hunts and pulses way too much. On top of that, when you're hand holding this camera, especially in low light situations, you're not gonna get the benefit of that big, beautiful sensor. You're not gonna get the sharpness. And so I feel like a smaller, more discreet camera would be a way better option on the street. Still, this is an exciting market. It's neat to see how the things are changing. And uh, we hope that other manufacturers will come up with some very exciting cameras as well in this mirrorless medium format market. I do wanna say though, thank you very much to Brent Taylor for helping us out with these shots and also to Dennis Peich for showing us his beautiful shop and beautiful knife making work. Uh, check out Brent Taylor Photography on Instagram and Facebook and go to BrentTaylorPhotography.com. Check out his work. It's really nice stuff. You won't be disappointed. As usual, we want you to check out our Instagram feeds, tweet to us, subscribe to the channel. Brent Taylor's right. We should have at least a million subscribers. So please do your part to help us out with that. As well, of course, leave any comments. Let us know what you think about this camera and where you think the industry is going. Uh, we'll be back very soon with some very exciting cameras. See you then.